Thank you so much for joining me. I'm meteorologist Brian Shields, and this is absolutely wild. I have to begin with this. This is going to be the uh, all-time longest cyclone on record, period. Any basin, Indian Ocean, Atlantic Pacific, wherever you are, it's happening right now. We've been talking about this for weeks and weeks in previous videos. This is Freddie. Now, this first became a tropical cyclone on February 6th, so over a month ago, and it's only one day away from tying the record for the longest lasting cyclone. This is the Mozambique Channel. Here's Madagascar. Here's Mozambique, Zimbabwe. You get into South Africa right here. So this is incredible stuff. And Freddie is only one of four tropical cyclones on record that have done a path like this. Let me wide, this is incredible. Let me widen out the view. So here's Africa. Here's the Indian Ocean. This started off the coast of Indonesia again over a month ago and it took a trek across you get stuff out here of course in the indian ocean but not much like this and this started uh, over a month ago as i said and it's now making its way again toward mozambique one of only four tropical cyclones that have traveled all the way across the indian ocean and only about five percent of these uh, any cyclones out there in the Indian Ocean actually make a landfall on the east coast of Africa and South Africa, only 5%. So this is rare. In this track, that's uh, about over 4,000 miles, and that's about 7,000 kilometers long. Now, let me zoom down and show you this. Again, this is just crazy stuff. So it's about to break the record. This is some real-time stuff coming in, zooming down. Let me get in real close. So this track is just wild. So again, it came across Madagascar, worked its way back in. The low stayed together. So it was still spinning over toward parts of South Africa and Zimbabwe, uh, Mozambique bringing rain. It moved off, it moved back into Madagascar. And now this thing is crazy. It's working its way. It's actually getting stronger and it's working its way back through the Mozambique Channel, and it's gonna make yet again another landfall. So, in the winds are gonna be cranking in this, again, upwards of 200 kilometers an hour at times, gust uh, 120 miles per hour as far as this, as it makes landfall. Again, now central sections, uh, central and northern sections of Mozambique, by the time we get into the end of the week, so you see the track here, and it's gonna work its way back to the north with that potential landfall, a likely landfall, just kind of fine-tuning and exactly where it is back into Mozambique but this is going to blow away the record for the longest lived tropical cyclone uh, that we've had. So that is just some nutty stuff. I will keep you posted on that. We're thinking of our friends that have to deal with this in Madagascar. It's a slow mover too, because when they take a spin, they're just sitting in the same areas, southwestern Madagascar, and then working its way back toward Mozambique. We are thinking of you as this will make another landfall as an intense cyclone once again. So this is just some uh, nutty stuff that we have been seeing. Now, I wanna switch over and talk about this. now. This is, uh, as we track, the sargasm out there. So sargasm, uh, that is, let me put this on here and let me update you on this. This is the seaweed. And this has been an issue. Now, if you are a tourist and you're traveling to the Caribbean, get down to the Caribbean. It is beautiful in the Caribbean. Uh, over the years, uh, there's been different methods in handling the sargasm. The sargasm itself, and these are the locations that we're seeing it. And I'm gonna zoom down in a second. Um, it could stink once it rolls up on shore. Uh, the Sargasm Sea is here. This is the Atlantic Ocean. But what happens is you get cycles here, different currents meeting here, and it builds up the sargasm. Sometimes that uh, seaweed works its way toward the Caribbean. And again, out from here in the open waters of the Atlantic, it kind of streams in. The issue is when it rolls up on shore, it does smell. It stinks. There's a lot of ways to remove it. It's not easy, uh, but you can remove it. The sargasm itself uh, does not irritate the skin, but what's in it does. So you get little sea creatures that live in it, and that's what could irritate the skin. So we've been seeing some reports of it. And again, this is common. This happens. It's uh, It's been out there. Of course, we've seen more sargasm uh, sargasm with the uh, nutrients out there, some of the uh, runoff that's, uh, that we see. Uh, but as we get over toward Belize, for example, not, not all of the reports are coming in. I know, and thank you of your comments. I know we've had uh, some of the uh, reports of the uh, uh, seaweed rolling on shore. This is not the red tide. It's not the same thing that Southwest Florida, for example, is dealing with. That alone, just breathing in that air can cause some issues. But you see some of the reports as we get north of uh, Belize City, get into the uh, Yucatan, a lot of reports up here. And uh, occasionally you could get some pictures out of this and what we're seeing here as far as it uh, rolling on shore. So I've been watching this. So again, watching the Yucatan, and then you swing back toward 
Jamaica and over toward the Cayman Islands. We've been seeing some reports north shore of where we've had it. Here's some of the uh, pictures. I could get you some of the photos that are popping up. So this is what it is. It's the big clumps of seaweed, as I mentioned themselves, it doesn't irritate the skin, but it's what's in it. Uh, it is sea life. And by the way, things like this, now while we've seen more because of the uh, nutrient runoff that helps it grow a lot, um, this is part of the uh, cycle overall. It's just been a little more intense. And you see again, this is uh, washing up on shore in some spots, just clicking through. That's a beautiful photo, albeit we're dealing with the seaweed. And again, it stinks, and that's one of the uh, issues. You see it right here, uh, just rolling on shore, and that's what happens. So different currents could kind of bring that on shore, and that's exactly uh, what we've been seeing overall. So watching, that's uh, over toward Jamaica. Let me zoom down a little bit, and you can see again the north coast. That's where we've been seeing a lot of the uh, the uh, issues uh, with uh, seeing this kind of rolling on shore. My microphone's getting stuck here. Let me get this out of the way. So watching out for that in Jamaica. Let me get some of this. Uh, and, and again, this kind of feeds in real time. So seeing this as we get back toward Cuba, and this here, by the way, in the uh, southeastern sections of Florida, that's not the red tide again, that's the sargas sarcasm, although we are seeing that as you get back toward Fort Myers, dealing with the red tide, you get over toward the Dominican Republic. Some reports, especially along the east side, and again, the north and east facing waters, that's where we're typically seeing it. See a report over towards San Juan of uh, getting some uh, reports of that seaweed rolling on shore. And then you get toward the Virgin Islands, we've had some reports of this. So watching out for the uh, Virgin Islands, you see through here, both the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, some reports of that. And again, do not let this deter you from going. This is what happens, but I want to give you some of the reports. And you can see it here in aerial view, as I double check my mic, an aerial view of it and you see just our beautiful water, uh, but you see the seaweed, and it, it cycles through. It'll roll on shore, it'll get out of the picture at some point, uh, but sometimes, depending on the location, they will be able to uh, remove it. So uh, seeing that over toward the Virgin Islands, swinging back toward my friends in Anguilla, uh, and you get back toward uh, Montserrat, and you get toward St. Martin. We've been seeing some reports, Antigua and Barbuda, see it uh, again moving uh, on shore. So this is not everywhere. Uh, I don't want it to make it look, in some places don't report it, some do. Uh, Dominica, decent shape right now. Martinique, we've got the uh, reports of the uh, seaweed rolling on shore. And we've had it in Barbados and parts of Trinidad and Tobago as well. So watching that, Barbados, uh, seeing some of the uh, seaweed reports. So again, I'll keep you posted on this as we move forward, even as you get over toward Guyana, seeing a little bit of uh, that. Let me know what's going on in the uh, comments section. Uh, let me know what you, you've been seeing out there, your location. Put your location in that so forth. So I, I've got a good idea. Uh, we've been developing a relationship over the years. So I, I know who you are, but you know, put your uh, location in it to help others out. All right, let me switch over to the dust and talk about this for a second because we've had the uh, dust around. So you get a look at this. This is uh, a broader picture. Now, this is the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, my friends in the Bahamas, and then you get over toward Africa. So you see the Saharan dust rolling off. So this is today, and you see some pockets of dust. It's that tan shading. Hasn't been too bad, but it's been building back a little bit toward the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Now, let me take you out in time uh, just a touch to show you how this kind of evolves. So this is by the time we get into tomorrow, pretty much the same thing. Let me stop it on Thursday. Thursday, as we pull forward, we're watching some of the uh, the dust uh, anywhere from Dominica south. So it's going to get a little thicker. Trinidad, Tobago, and Aruba, Curacao, Bonaire, northern Venezuela, Guyana, Suriname. We have the dust. Even with some of the rain, it mixes in as you get over toward uh, Suriname. And Guyana. I know we've had some rain getting you through Friday. Friday it is going to lessen a little bit in as we get into the weekend. And this is exactly what I was talking about in yesterday's video. It does back off. Still over toward Trinidad. We may have some dust. This is on Saturday. But you can see it does back off some. So that's why I like to give you that heads up that we are going to have it this week and then it will lessen as we get into the weekend. So we've covered uh, what's going on with Freddy. We have covered the seaweed out there and the dust. Now let's get into some forecasts. Barbados today, we're watching some of that dust that will be around a slight chance of a passing shower. But like we were talking about together yesterday, the rain chance just not too high. Wind southeast at about, about 32 kilometers an hour or 20 miles per hour. And of course, staying on the warm side, my friends in St. Lucia, a small rain chance today, a 20% chance. Still that layer of dust. We'll have our warm afternoon wind southeast, 24 kilometers an hour or 50 miles per hour, 30 degrees today. So as I mentioned, it is going to be that warm afternoon. Grenada 
and over towards St. Vincent and the Grenadines down through Trinidad and Tobago. Grenada today partly cloudy, mainly dry. If you get a shower, consider yourself lucky. 10% chance breezy. Winds east at 32 kilometers an hour, 29 degrees for us today. So mid 80s Fahrenheit scale. So rain chance stays small. The dust, as I showed you a minute or two ago, does get better by the weekend. Mid to late March. Now, if you didn't see yesterday's video, check it out. I looked way ahead because we're trying to find some rain. There is a better chance, not a washout, but there is a better chance that was in yesterday's video. Mid to late March are getting some fronts to the north that could help at least give us a few showers. Otherwise, that drought continues overall the light chop in the Caribbean. So I'll keep an eye on that dust. We'll watch that trend of it dropping off. Historic Freddy, I'll let you know about that as well tomorrow. Tomorrow is the record breaking day for Freddy. It'll be the longest lived cyclone. That is nutty stuff. Thank you. Thank you for enjoying my enthusiasm. I am enthusiastic about the weather, but not about any of the damage it may cause. I'm thinking of our friends in uh, Madagascar and Mozambique. I never, ever want to see a storm moving in. The weather can be awesome in one fashion, devastating in another, and I try to do my best to strike that balance, and I know a lot of you uh, know me uh, over the years doing this channel, so thank you uh, for hanging with me, and until then, I hope you have a good day ahead.